Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll add to our knowledge of amateur radio terminology. We will also start learning about uh, amateur radio equipment operations and procedures. While the video focuses on the exam question, it uh, foreshadows what will come in your uh, amateur radio future. Well, are you ready to learn? Well, let's get started then. This is lesson two, part one of my amateur radio technician class license course covering the 2022 to 2026 question pool. I'm your instructor, Gary Stevens, and my call sign is Kilo Echo 2 Golf Sierra. I hold an amateur extra license, and I've been an amateur radio operator since 2001, and an amateur radio extra since 2014, and I've been teaching amateur radio for over 15 years. The sub-element T2 section covers the operating procedures. On your exam, three questions will be randomly selected from sub-element 2, or T2, excuse me. This sub-element has three groups and a total of 36 questions. This video covers the first group, T2A, station operation, choosing an uh, operating frequency, calling another station, test transmissions, band plans, calling frequencies, and repeater offsets. We must know that 600 kilohertz is a common repeater frequency offset in the two meter band. An offset is defined as a 300 to uh, 1000 hertz difference in CW transmitting uh, and receiving frequencies in a transceiver. For repeater, offset refers to the difference between the transmitting and the receive frequencies. The photo on the left shows a handheld transceiver uh, displaying the repeater's output frequency or our receive frequency. The other one on the right shows that the transmitter is being keyed to our transmit and the offset frequency is displayed. Our transceiver's output frequency is the same as the repeater's input, input frequency. On the exam, you might see this. What is a common repeater frequency offset for the two meter band? A, plus or minus five megahertz, B, plus or minus 600 kilohertz, C, plus or minus 500 kilohertz, or D, plus or minus one megahertz. We know, of course, that the answer is B, plus or minus 600 kilohertz. We should know that 146.520 megahertz is the national calling frequency for FM simplex operation in the two meter band. We know this from the ARRL band plan for two meters. As you can see, the 146.52 megahertz is the national simplex calling frequency. Simplex operation means that we are receiving and transmitting on the same frequency, unlike the offsets with the repeaters. Here we see a dual band transceiver with our selected band set to the 146.52 megahertz, the national simplex calling frequency for two meters. The other band is set to 446.0 megahertz, which is the national simplex calling frequency for 70 centimeters. On our exam, we may see this question. What is the national calling frequency for FM simplex operation in the two meter band? A, 146.52 megahertz. B, 145.000 megahertz. C, 432.100 megahertz. Or D, 446.000 megahertz. Right off the bat, you should be able to see that we can eliminate two of these distractor questions because they're in the 70 centimeter band. That was B answers C and D. You should have selected A, 146.520 megahertz as the answer. If you missed it, 
just make a note and uh, to study your uh, band plan some more. We need to know that plus or minus five megahertz is a common repeater frequency offset in the 70 centimeter band. Offset information can be found online. Sites like repeaterbook.com offer free information about repeaters around the country. This example shows the K2 BNL repeater in Upton, New York, which uses a standard offset of five megahertz. Notice the plus sign. This indicates that the offset is added instead of subtracted. The direction isn't arbitrary. The polarity may help avoid interference with another repeater nearby. Much like the earlier slide, this photo on the left shows the handheld transceiver display and the repeater's output frequency or our receive frequency. And the other one on the right shows that the transceiver has been keyed to our transmit and the offset frequency is displayed. The associated exam question is, what is the common repeater frequency offset in the 70 centimeter band? A, plus or minus five megahertz, B, plus or minus 600 kilohertz, C, plus or minus 500 kilohertz, or D, plus or minus one megahertz. Did you get this one? The answer is A, plus or minus five megahertz. We need to know that the appropriate way to call another station on a repeater, if you know the other station's call sign, is to say the station's call sign, then identifying your own call sign. N2RRQ, this is KE2GS. N2RRQ. KE2GS. The question exam will be something like this. What is the appropriate way to call another station on a repeater if you know the other station's call sign? A, say break, break, then say the station's call sign. B, say the station's call sign, then identify with your call sign. C, say CQ three times and then the other station's call sign. D, wait for the station to call CQ, then answer. The correct answer is B. Say the station's call sign and then identify with your own call sign. We need to know that we should transmit the other station's call sign followed by your own call sign is how you would respond to a station calling CQ. This slide shows the proper way to call CQ and how to answer a CQ call from another station. By the way, CQ means calling to any station. It's a general call when requesting a conversation with anyone. It's not commonly used on repeaters, however, but you will find it more often on the HF bands. Long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, amateur radio operators built their own equipment, and CW or Morse code was the only way to talk. As you might guess, sending letters is more manageable when sending something like calling any station. The latter is 19 letters to key in of Morse code, if you count the spaces. That's a lot different than just sending CQ. Today, many of the CW abbreviations have carried over into the phone modes. So you will likely hear such things as CQ and 73 a lot. Although CQ is mainly found in the HF bands. The question on your exam looks something like this. How should you respond to a station calling CQ? A, transmit CQ followed by your the other st uh, station's call sign. B, transmit your call sign followed by the other station's call sign. C, transmit the other station's call sign followed by your, your call sign. D, transmit a signal report followed by your call sign. I hope you pick C. Transmit the other station's call sign followed by your call sign.
We need to know that it is required to identify the transmitting station when making on the air test transmissions. Here's an example of a test transmission. Although it's acceptable to just use your call sign per, uh, per the rules. Do you remember from the rules section we just finished? Part 97.119, station identification started that no station may transmit unidentified communications or signals or transmit as the station call sign, any call sign not authorized to the station. The exam question looks like this. Which of the following is required when making an on-air test transmission? A, identify the transmitting station. B, conduct tests only between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. local time. C, notify the FCC of the transmissions. D, all these choices are correct. The correct answer is A, identify the transmitting station. We need to know that the difference between a repeater's transmitted uh, frequency and its received frequency is what is meant by a repeater offset. If you recall, we discussed this earlier in this lesson. This slide further illustrates the principle of repeater offset. This is called a duplex operation because it uses two frequencies to communicate. On the exam, our question looks like this. What is meant by repeater offset? A, the difference between a repeater's transmit and receive frequencies. B, the repeater has a time delay to prevent interference. C, the repeater station identification is done on a separate frequency. Or D, the number of simultaneous transmit frequencies used by a repeater station. Was your answer A, the difference between a repeater's transmit and receive frequencies? That is the correct answer. Again, we should know that the procedural signal CQ means calling any station. We do this by transmitting like this. CQ, 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 this is KE2GS. Or CQ, 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 this is Kilo Echo 2 Golf Sierra. Our test question looks like this. What is the meaning of the procedural signal CQ? A, call on the quarter hour. B, test transmissions, no reply expected. C, only the call station should uh, transmit. Or D, calling any station. We know, of course, that the answer is D, calling any station. You must know that the station's call sign followed by the word monitoring indicates that a station is listening on the repeater and looking for contact. Typically, we would just say something like KE2GS monitoring, or this is Kilo Echo 2 Golf Zero monitoring. Since we were talking about repeater use, this slide shows a blog about repeater etiquette. I only mention it because it is an excellent blog to read before and after you get your license. However, remember that the questions and answers we cover in these lessons are the ones that are on the exam. The exam question is this, which of the following indicates that a station is listening on a repeater and looking for contact? A, CQ, CQ, followed by the repeater's call sign. B, the station's call sign followed by the word monitoring. C, the repeater's call sign followed by the station's call sign. Or QSY followed by your call sign. Did you answer B, the station's call sign followed by the word monitoring? I sure hope so. We will need to know what a band plan is. A band plan beyond the privileges established by the FCC is a voluntary guideline 
for using different modes or activities within the amateur band. If you search for ARRL band plan on the web, you will find a downloadable PDF file like this one. It is an excellent reference to keep handy. Our exam question goes like this. What is a band plan beyond the privileges established by the FCC? A, a voluntary guideline for using different modes or activities within the amateur band. B, a list of operating schedules. C, a list of available net frequencies. Or D, a plan devised by a club to indicate frequency band usage. I hope you got this answer. The correct answer is A, a voluntary guideline for using different modes or activities within the amateur band. We need to understand that simplex is a term that describes an amateur station that is transmitting and receiving on the same frequency. We have talked about several questions that have to do with simplex already. Do you remember what the simplex calling frequency is? Our test question is, what term describes an amateur station that is transmitting and receiving on the same frequency? A, full duplex, B, diplex, C, simplex, or D, multiplex? Did you pick C as your answer? If you did, good job. The following is a guideline when choosing an operating frequency for calling CQ. Make sure that you are in your assigned band. Listen first to be sure that no one else is using the frequency. Ask if the frequency is in use. You might get this question on your exam. What should you do before calling CQ? A, listen first to be sure that no one else is using the frequency. B, ask if the frequency is in use. C, make sure that you are authorized to use that frequency. D, all these choices are correct. If you pick D, all these choices are correct, you are rocking this. This is the end of lesson two, part one. Since amateur radio has come into existence, we have served during many disasters. For example, we came together after floods, hurricanes, and tornadoes. Another example is when we were in New York City helping the rescuers communicate immediately after 9-11. And finally, on February 1st, 2003, we were there helping to pick up the pieces after the space shuttle Columbia exploded over the Texas skies. Craig Fugit, the former FEMA administrator, once said, when everything else fails, amateur radio oftentimes is our last line of defense. When you need amateur radio, you really need them. Until next time, my friends, never stop learning. <laughs>